Hey, this is Mrs. Reichelt, and we're continuing on our reproductive system discussion. So we're still talking about the male reproductive system, and we're kind of moving on from the ductus or the duct system, and we're moving to the the couple accessory organs. Not all of them, but just the major ones here. So the the major things that we're going to talk about are the seminal vesicles, the prostate, and the bulbal urethral glands. So that's kind of an intro to where we're going here. So let's go ahead and talk about the seminal vesicles first. So the seminal vesicles, if you look at this diagram, are basically located right behind the bladder and um, they produce a thick yellowish secretion and over 68% of it is actually made up of semen, so the actual sperm cells. Um, so it also is made up of fructose, which is a sugar, vitamin C, prostaglandins and some other substances that nourish and activate the sperm. So your takeaway here would be that the seminal vesicles have a thick yellowish secretion, 60% of that is semen, and their function is to help to activate sperm, to help it to swim and use their propellers and their flagella and that sort of thing. So the prostate is the next one that we're going to go ahead and talk about. And the prostate encircles the upper part of the urethra. Okay, It also helps or it secretes a milky fluid and it helps to activate sperm. And it's going to enter the urethra through small or several small ducts. So basically the prostate is just going to help to activate the sperm. And if we look at the prostate, this large gland right here is the prostate gland. Then we have the bulbourethral gland. So the bulbourethral glands, they, basically this is a pea-sized gland and they're going to be located right here. It's kind of that pinkishy looking structure and it's going to produce a um, thick clear mucus. And the purpose of this is actually before it, um, the ejaculation occurs, uh, because the the urethra is used not only for sperm, but also for uh, urine output as well. Uh, basically, the bulbal urethral gland has the responsibility of basically cleaning out the acidic nature of this urethra. So all of the, the leftover um, low pH from the urine output will be cleansed there. So the purpose of this bulbal urethral gland is to cleanse and clean out the the, the urethra and it serves as a lubricant during sexual intercourse and it also um, is excreted into the penile urethra. So just be aware that the bulbal urethral gland helps to clean out the acidic nature of the urethra. And then actual semen is a mixture of a couple of different things. So semen is made up of sperm as well as all the accessory gland secretions that are associated with it. So the advantage or some of the advantages of those accessory gland secretions is that the fructose or that sugar provides energy for the sperm cells. The alkalinity of the semen helps to neutralize the acidic environment of the vagina. And then semen also inhibits bacterial mul multiplication, um, meaning that it helps to make it so bacteria does not continue to grow. And then um, elements of semen also enhance sperm motility meaning sperm movement. So um, some of those accessory organs also help to um, ensure that that sperm is continuing to move. So some of the external genitalia um, is the scrotum, is the divided sac of skin that's outside of the abdomen. So collectively here you have scrotum right there. Um, it maintains the testes three degrees Celsius lower than the normal body temperature. Um, the purpose for that is it helps to protect sperm viability. Um, sperm doesn't uh, like to be in 100 or I guess 98 degrees Fahrenheit. It likes to be in a little bit cooler temperatures. Um, so keeping that um, outside of the abdomen helps to keep that sperm temperature cooler. The penis delivers sperm into the female reproductive tract. Um, so the major regions of the penis include the shaft, the gland penis, which is the enlarged tip, and the uh, precipice, which is the foreskin. Uh, so this, um, the prepus, is the folded cuff of skin around the proximal end of the penis, and it's often moved by, uh, removed by a circumcision. So the next thing that we're going to go through and talk about is spermatogenesis. 
So spermatogenesis is just the production of the sperm cell. Um, hopefully you remember in biology going through mitosis and meiosis. Well, this is basically meiosis. And we're just going to do it in a really quick form here. So basically um, the sperm formation or spermatogenesis is going to begin at puberty and it'll continue throughout um, the male's life. And what will happen here is, I guess, this is a good diagram, but I'm going to make it a little bit easier, I think. So a human cell has 46 chromosomes in it. So basically what will happen is that 46 is going to undergo DNA replication. It's going to turn into 92 cells. Then meiosis 1 is going to occur. During meiosis 1, your genetic material is going to be reduced by half. Okay, but there's still, that's still a too big of a number to have because that's your original number. We have to reduce it again. So what we're going to do again is we're going to now go into meiosis 2, which maybe I'll write meiosis 1 here. So meiosis 1 here, and then meiosis 2 starts here. And if you split um, 46, you're going to get 4 cells with each each having 23 chromosomes. So ultimately the end process or product of spermatogenesis is four functional sperm um, cells. And then spermatogenesis, um, basically uh, you have stem cells that undergo rapid mitosis which produce more stem cells before puberty. Uh, then you have follicle stimulating hormone or FSH which modifies the spermatogonia which um, Basically, this produces a stem cell, and you have a type A daughter cell, and then the other one becomes the primary um, spermatocyte, or the B daughter cell, and then it's, it is assembled from there to make a, a functional sperm cell. Um, so that basically are the accessory organs of the uh, male reproductive system, and I hope you found that helpful.